Hey guys, I just want to let you know about two very important and timely events. Debbie's publisher, Chosen Books, has agreed to put the ebook version of her book, The Gift of Prophetic Encouragement, on sale for 99 cents the entire month of September. You can find it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and any other online retailers where books are sold. This is also perfect timing for the free online video-based Bible study with Debbie beginning October 10th, 2019. Or for more details or to sign up, look in the show description or visit DebbieKitterman.com. Hello, I'm Debbie Kitterman and welcome to Dare to Hear the Podcast, where we equip you and challenge you to dare to hear the voice of God. Today, I am excited to introduce to you my special guest and my dear friend, Dr. Michelle Bankston. And maybe you know her because of her book, Hope Prevails, but we are here to talk about her brand new book that just released, Breaking Anxiety's Grip. Now, Dr. Michelle Bankston is a board certified neuropsychologist with more than 25 years of experience in the mental health field. She is a national and international media resource on mental health and wellness, and Dr. Bankston is the award-winning uh, author of Hope Prevails and the Hope Prevails Bible Study. She writes at drmichellebankston.com, and she lives with her husband and her two sons and their three dogs in the Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas area. Welcome to the show, Dr. Michelle. Thanks, Debbie. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, I'm so excited to have you here. Um, what I love about you is that when people read your stuff, that not only are they getting your expertise as a neuropsychologist in 25 years of your in the ground, feet to the ground work, right? But that they're also getting your personal experience in things. And so the first question that I want to ask you today about your book, by the way, can you hold that book up? Because I don't have a copy of it yet because it is, um, it just released. And so, um, but I love the title. I love the, I love the, it stays with the theme that you had with Hope Prevails too. And I love that, but that ocean is my happy place. We've talked about this a lot, um, that we're water girls. Um, yeah. yeah. So, but I want to, the question that I want to jump off with is that, um, you talk a lot about having dealt with anxiety yourself. And that's what I loved about Hope Prevails because you dealt with that. You had walked that road, but you do the same thing here um, in this book. And so in what way did that experience help you in writing this book? You know, when I started to write Hope Prevails, I hadn't yet really gone through a severe bout of depression and I started to write it. And then I went through the severe depression and it, totally changed the direction wow. of the book. And then it was my readers who said, when are you going to write a book on anxiety? And I thought, oh, no, I don't, I don't want to write a book on anxiety. And the reason I said that is because I knew from experience writing Hope Prevails and the Hope Prevails Bible Study that if I was going to undertake that heavy subject, that God was going to prune me in the process. But I had dealt with anxiety before, and I have many, many in my family tree who have struggled with anxiety. In fact, I joke with my husband that when we go to family reunions, it's like a walking anxiety disorder. You can just see it. You can feel it. It's palpable. And so I have dealt with anxiety. And so when I write about it, I can vividly remember the days when I would drive to work with that boulder in my stomach mm -hmm. with tears streaming down my face feeling like I, I can't do this I just don't think I can do it and I'm one of those people who will get invited to speaking events or other activities and in the moment I think oh that's that's great. I need to do this. And when the time comes and I have to hop in the car or climb on the airplane and I think I can't do it. I, I don't think I can do it. And the anxiety will get overwhelming. Not so much anymore since I've had to walk through this and learn how to battle it. But I know what it's like to be gripped with fear and to have the worry so overwhelming that I'm just not sure that I can put one step in front of the other. And so when readers asked me to write it, I thought, okay, 
Let's do it, God. Let's figure this out once and for all, because God tells us so often in his word, do not fear. Do not worry for tomorrow. Be anxious for nothing. He says it so many times. And I think the reason he says it is because he knows we're all going to struggle. In fact, anxiety is termed the common cold of mental illness. And the reason it is, is because I think we all experience it at some time or another, maybe not to a diagnosable proportion, Mm -hmm. but we all experience it so much so that we accept it just like we accept a common cold. But God says, no, don't go there. That's not your portion. Anxiety is not your portion. My peace is. And so, you know, when my readers asked me to write about it, I thought, okay, let's do it. Let's let's do it. God, if you will help me, (laughs) let's do it. Let's figure out what the answer is because he always provides the answers in his word. So let's figure out what those answers are, wrestle through it and see if we can't help some other people in the process. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, and I think one of the things like um, when you started writing it and you were looking for testimonies, like you, I gave you some and I said, Oh, I got a bunch of people that can help you out here. Because I think if we're real and honest with ourselves at some point in our lives that we have dealt with fear or anxiety to some varying degrees, um, some more than others, Others, but it creeps up in there. And that's why I love the, the breaking anxiety's grip, right? How to reclaim the peace of God's promises, because it's really all about staying in this position of peace. And I too would not have been delighted that my readers wanted me to write on that topic. That's why I'm so glad that God chose you uh, to do that. Um, not not just because, you know, you're right. When when God asks you to do something, there's usually this printing process so that you have raw material to uh, work from, but also because I'm not a neuropsychologist and I don't know the other piece. And I love how you so be- beautifully just weave those um, moments into the book. As I was reading it, it was like, so here's the research behind it, but here's how it it walks out. And just some of the testimonies, I found myself saying, oh yeah, I've experienced that. Me too. And I mean, this is not the direction I was going to go, but one of the things that you said too, is like the minute you turn this in, like you had this moment to put into practice, right? Like you got this phone call and you had just turned in the manuscript and people can read that in the book because that's not the direction we're going. We're not, I'm not going to give that away, but that we have these opportunities that the enemy will come against us and say, well, do you really believe what you just wrote? Oh, I think that happens to most authors. Yeah. You know, it, whether it's the enemy or whether it's the Lord, I think as authors, we are given the opportunity more times than we would like where our message is truly tested to make sure that we truly believe what we've written. I've had that happen with each book now. And it truly solidified for me, do I believe this message? Can I stand by it? Mm -hmm. And am I going to continue to live it? And I've had more opportunities than I would like to to really determine if I'm going to stand behind it. And each time, fortunately, I've been able to say, yes, I do. But I've had to go back to each book now and reread it for myself. And it's almost like a fresh message each time. It's fresh words. And each time I read it, I thought, who wrote that? Who wrote that? Because it applies to me. Right. So I'm so happy when it helps other people, but it, the Lord uses it to minister to my life. Yeah. Which I love. I love that because I, when I lead and when I speak, I tell people what you see is what you get. Um, and, and that I try to live as authentically and as transparent as I can. And I want to say, I'm not just telling you to do this stuff because I know it works because the Bible says it. I'm telling you to do this because I'm actually applying it in my own life. And that's what I love about you, Dr. Michelle, is that you've applied these things. So they have been proven, they have been tested in your own life and also in your practice as well. So here's my next question for you. And this is when a person is faced with crisis, you talk about in your book, two choices, they can either trust the facts and the circumstances, or they have to trust God's promises. Can you discuss with me how a person can work through these two choices? Yeah. uh, Let me give you a very vivid example. I remember my husband was diagnosed with cancer. And in a split second, when crisis happened, 
we have a choice to make. And when he was given the diagnosis of cancer, our choice was to listen and believe the fact which was cancer had invaded his body, mm -hmm. or I could believe the truth. And the truth is that God is still a healer today. Mm -hmm. So the fact is there is cancer, but the truth is that God is greater than cancer. And so what I tell people all the time is that cancer is a little C, mm -hmm. but Christ is a capital C That's and amazing. all names have to bow to the name of Jesus Christ and cancer is a name. So cancer has to bow to the name of Jesus Christ. So even though facts are so compelling, mm -hmm. we have to choose to believe truth over the facts and facts can often breed worry fear and anxiety and believe me in a case of cancer and we've dealt with this three times in his life right that can really stir up worry fear and anxiety and the enemy will use facts to stir that up but we have a choice to make are we going to focus on those facts or are we going to focus on the truth of God's word. Mm -hmm. And that's where we have to know our Bible. We have to know the truth of God's word, and we have to choose to believe that over what we see in the natural. Mm. Which is so good because it goes with the like daring to hear God in those moments, yeah. right? Not um, believing the truth or what we hear being said in the natural, but daring to hear and pressing in to hear God. What is your truth in this situation? What does your word say about this? And I think it's, it's like, um, we're contending for my niece and some healing in her life with her unborn child. And um, I said, we have to have this incubator of faith where we stand upon those promises. And so we only let people come into the incubator that can be in faith and yes. can speak the truth. And I think we need to see that over our own lives as well. And that's what you just described is there are the facts as the people see them in the natural that we see, but then there's the truth and we need to step over into that incubator of truth over our lives and then trust what God says. I, that was a common theme throughout the entire book. As I read, it's like every page I'm turning trust, trust. And I'm like, Oh God, are you talking to me about trust? Because it, it goes hand in hand with really getting the peace, right? It talks about, you talk about it so much. You cannot overcome worry, fear, and anxiety if you do not trust God. Mm. And so often that is where our worry, fear, and anxiety comes from. It comes from having more trust in what the enemy tells us than what God tells us. Mm. And so if we're listening to that voice of the enemy in our head and we're <laughs> believing him, then we are not believing. We are not trusting the word of God to be true. So we have to make the decision of where are we going to place our trust. Hmm. That is so good. That is so good. And that reminds me of one of these quotes that um, I pulled out. I'm going to read it too. Um, it's, you quoted somebody and you said, your faith can move mountains, but your doubt can create them. Yes. Yes. I read that and I'm like, okay, I have to go back and read the paragraph before because it just kind of stopped me in my tracks. In fact, I highlighted it and I was like, wow, how many times do just that little seed of doubt, do we begin to create the mountains when we've been asking by faith for God to remove them? Mm -hmm. So that was kind of one of those mic drop moments when you had that in, in that, it was towards the end of the book, but it, it, it was so good. Okay, I wanna ask you, so if we're daring to hear God, if we're pressing in, we want to believe the truth, we want to stand upon those promises, how can spiritual weapons be used to combat anxiety? Well, it says in 2 Timothy 1.7, mm -hmm. for God hath not given you the spirit of fear, mm -hmm. but of power, love, and sound mind. And if your listeners listen to nothing else, God has given us the antidote or, or the prescription right there for weary fear and anxiety. He has given us the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. Mm -hmm. And part of that is the power of Jesus's name. He's given us the power that raised Jesus from the dead. He's given us the power of God's presence. But we have to put that in practice by intentionally 
sitting in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. He's given us the power of our words. Not enough of us pay attention oh, so to the words that we speak. Mm -hmm. Scripture says that there is power of life and death in our words. You know, people speak things all the time, like saying, well, you know, that's just going to be the death of me. And I think you've just given that the power yep. that to be the death of you. Or people will say, well, that just drives me crazy. I know. Yes, it will. It so will. there are so, there's so much that God has bestowed upon us that is powerful mm -hmm. for us for fighting worry, fear, and anxiety. Mm -hmm. The second tool or weapon for fighting worry, fear, and anxiety is God's love. Mm, we good. receive his love. First of all, we have to accept it. We have to believe it. We have to appropriate it and we have to practice it. Yeah. And not enough of us realize our full identity in Christ. And until we do that, we don't accept that we are lovable. Yeah. But when we do, scripture says that perfect love casts out all fear. And so when we realize that we are as loved by God as Jesus was, mm -hmm. then we, God bestows upon us the same blessings mm -hmm. that he gave to Jesus. So he's going to protect us as much as he did his only begotten son. Yeah. He, he not only gives us the cattle on a thousand hills, but God owns all the hills. And scripture says that we are joint heirs with Jesus. So God loves us that much. And then the third weapon that we can use against worry, fear, and anxiety mm -hmm. is a sound mind. Mm -hmm. We have the same mind as Jesus does. Yeah. Jesus could fight against the enemy in the desert. When Jesus was in the desert for 40 days without food, he fought against the enemy. The enemy taunted him and he could fight against the enemy and win. And he fought using scripture. Well, we can do the same thing, but we have to know the scripture. We have to be in the scripture. And so God has given us the tools, the weapons to be effective against worry, fear, and anxiety. But it's up to us to be disciplined and to use those weapons. That's so good. That is so good. And I, I love, I love um, how you talked about too, like our words matter and what we think on, we actually empower. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't really thought about it until years ago when I used to say, ah, oh, that just blows my mind. And somebody's like, I don't think you want to be saying that. And I went, you know, actually you're right. My words matter. And I think that we sometimes flippantly say things because it's just like, oh, it's funny or maybe it's not funny, but it's like, we don't know, like we're just trying to express ourselves. And so we do, we give power over to those things that we say because our words have power. And I love that about love and the things that we think on and um, so good. So, 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 so good. Um, I want to um, talk about this story that you share about in the book um, about this little black dot. And so I'm not going to give it away because I just want you to kind of talk about the story about this teacher and then share the results. And how does it relate to us today and how we can learn something from that? long time ago, I heard this story about a professor, and when all the students came into the class, the professor handed out a sheet of paper, and all that was on the sheet of paper was a little black dot. And the professor wanted the class to write an essay about what was on the paper. And student after student after student after student wrote an essay about this black dot and what was so interesting about that is nobody took the time or even noticed all the white space 
And as a neuropsychologist, that was fascinating to me because it just exemplified how we tend to get wrapped up in all the negativity. Mm. And we, we don't notice all the positives that go on. And when we focus so much on the negative, that steers the course of our life. But it also represents what the enemy tries to do in our mind. If the enemy can put just a tiny black seed of doubt mm -hmm. or despair or concern or worry or fear or anxiety in there, all the good stuff that's going on, all the blessing, all the joy, all of a sudden fades in the distance. And so it's been a conscious effort for me to try to focus on what is God doing? What is God blessing? How is God showing himself faithful? And those who are some of my closest friends know that my family and I have been going through some real difficult trials over the past five, six, seven years. And they've been some real life-threatening trials. And people will say, I don't know how you continue to maintain joy in this. I don't know how you continue to keep a smile on your face. But it's been a conscious effort because, you know what? Jesus went through so much worse than I could ever imagine going through. But even in the hard times, God is faithful. God is good. God is trustworthy. And I have seen that to be true even more so in my difficult days. And it's in those hard times that we have the opportunity to say, okay, God, show me again that you are trustworthy, that you are faithful, that I can count on you. And when we go through those hard times, that's an opportunity for others' faith to be bolstered because they get to see the testimony that comes out of it. God will always use our pain for our good and others' good and for his glory. And if we can remember that, if we can focus on that, if we will remember that Romans 8, 28 said that God uses all things together for good. Mm -hmm. And God is not a liar. All of his promises will come true, but we have to be willing to be patient to see that happen. Yeah. Not all of life feels good, but we can trust that God is good. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's one of the things where he never promised us that it would be easy, but he promised it would be worth it right? And that he would never leave us. He would never forsake us. And he's right there with us through it. And I love Romans chapter eight is like that whole passage of scripture is like, I love it because I used to deal with fear and I had a spirit of fear. And then it talked about that. And then it's like, and then now it's time for you to step up into your rightful place as being a daughter of God and, and what is all entailed with that. And then also that when those things happen, that God still works them together for his good. I like to look at myself, Dr. Michelle, as the person that it, that sees always the good side. But when I read that story about the black dot on the paper, it made me stop and think, what would I have written if I knew I was supposed to write an essay? And because my focus would have been on that black dot, would I have written about the white space? Would I have looked and put the positive spin on it? Or would I have just been like everybody else? Because that's kind of what our society expects of us, right? Yeah, so good. Um, I just want to, I want to thank you so much for being on, for sharing about your book. Um, for, for my watchers on YouTube, could you hold your book up again? Um, because they want to get this Breaking Anxiety's Grip, How to Reclaim the Peace God Promises. And can you tell us how we can connect with you, uh, Dr. Michelle, and where they can get your book? Sure. I write at drmichelleb.com and I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, Dr. Michelle Bankson, and you can get the book at Amazon, on my website, christianbook.com, Barnes and Noble, any major retailer you can yeah. find it. And I just want to say this too, to, um, to my listeners that know you, that they can expect the same great 
prescriptions at the end of each chapter that you gave us in Hope Prevails and the Hope Prevails Bible Study. It's like, that's your signature thing, the prescriptions that you give us, the prayers that you pray for us, and then the playlist that you give us as well. And so I'm, I was really excited to see that you carry that over into this book. For those of you that haven't read any of her books, then you just want to plan on getting all three of them, The Hope Prevails, The Hope Prevails Bible Study, and her latest one, Breaking Anxiety's Grip. So Dr. Michelle, as we're ending this episode today, I this is such a powerful thing that we as the body of Christ need to overcome. We need to loosen anxiety's grip in our lives. We need to trust God. Could you be could you just pray for us, um, whatever God puts on your heart, um, just because you have an anointing in this area. This is something God has given you a message to write about, but also a message that you're living out right now. So could you just pray for us? It would be my honor. Thank you. Oh, Father God, I just want to lift up anyone who is watching or listening, who struggles with even just a seed of worry or fear or anxiety. You have said in your word that you do not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. Father, I pray that they would hold on to the truth in your word. Father, you say to be anxious for nothing, but to cast all their cares on you. Father, would they just be willing to tell you what those concerns are and then to trust you? And where they lack in trust, Father, would you just bolster bolster their trust, bolster their faith, bolster their belief in you, an all-powerful God who cares about anything that they care about. Father, we know that worry, fear, and anxiety are not our portion, but peace is. You have said that you have come to give us peace, not as the world gives, but that as you alone give an everlasting peace. And we thank you for that gift, a gift that only could be given because of the gift that your son came to give by dying on the cross. Father, I know that if we could ask Jesus today, what does he say about worry, fear, and anxiety? He would say, it is finished. So we thank you for that. Father, I thank you for each one who is listening. Father, I ask that you would eradicate worry, fear, and anxiety from their life even now. In Jesus' name I pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, Dr. Michelle, thank you for being with us today. I'm so glad that my listeners can hear this. Uh, thank you for listening to Dare to Hear the podcast, where we encourage you to dare to hear the voice of God. I am Debbie Kitterman. If you were encouraged in any way, we would be honored if you would subscribe to our podcast or our YouTube channel. We also ask that you leave a review, that you follow us, like us, and that you share this, that we can get the message out there about Dr. Michelle's new book and also just about the Dare to Hear podcast in general. And with that, we look forward to having you join us next week, tuning in and have a blessed week. And do not let anxiety, fear, or worry get the better of you, but instead trust God and press into him and stand on the truth, not the facts, as the world would tell you they are. Have a blessed week. Until next time.